Catching a rocket in mid-air with a giant metal tower is an epic way to land a rocket. But the real question is, will this method be enough to meet the huge workload of Elon's ambition? Well, there are many ways to skin a cat, and there are many ways to land a rocket. Now, a new method for landing a starship has been unveiled that doesn't rely on Mechazilla. What is that? Join me as I explore this, but be prepared. Things could get a little splashy. 2024 has been a remarkable year for Elon Musk and SpaceX, marked by numerous impressive achievements. One of the standout moments was the successful capture of Booster 12 by Mechazilla during Flight 5, a milestone that was later hailed by the BBC as the top science highlight of 2024. SpaceX is currently utilizing this landing method for the Super Heavy Booster, and in the upcoming Flight 8 scheduled for this year, they plan to employ the same technique to catch the Starship as well. This method offers several advantages, such as reducing weight by eliminating the need for landing legs. However, in the long term, it is likely to present a range of challenges. First, can the system keep up with Starship's demanding launch schedule? SpaceX is seeking approval from the FAA for up to 25 Starship launches annually in 2025, aiming for nearly one launch every two weeks. Elon's long-term vision is to transform Starship into a commercial vehicle capable of launching every 24 hours. Such a tight schedule would put a huge burden on Mechazilla. If this tower was the only method for both takeoff and landing of Starship, the inspection and refurbishment after each flight could not be done carelessly. Relying on a single landing method also presents a significant risk. Remember what happened during the sixth test flight. Due to an issue with the launch tower, Starship had to change its plan and splash down into the ocean. Once Starship enters service, we can't afford to simply ditch the ship in the ocean every time something goes wrong, especially when it's carrying a crew. For those reasons, a backup landing plan had to be created, and I think they already had it. The method they've always used with the Falcon 9 is to utilize an Autonomous Spaceport Drone Ship, or ASDS. It is a modified ocean-going barge equipped with propulsion systems to maintain precise position and a large landing platform. SpaceX started using this method in early 2015. Up to now, there have been three drone ships built named. Just read the instructions. Of course, I still love you. And a shortfall of gravitas. Drone ship landings offer unmatched flexibility by leveraging the mobility of these platforms. Positioned anywhere in the ocean, they enable Starship to optimize its return trajectory, eliminating the need for extra fuel to reach a fixed landing site. This adaptability enhances both efficiency and performance. Recovering Starship and Super Heavy in the open ocean further mitigates the risk to human and land infrastructure in case of an anomaly. The vast expanse of water serves as a natural buffer, effectively diminishing the likelihood of harm from debris or unintended explosions. With more than 300 successful landings, Falcon 9 has proven the safety and reliability of this method. Now that we've outlined the benefits of drone ships, how can we bring this concept to life? Significant modifications and enhancements will be required to enable Starship to land safely using this approach. The first is on the Starship itself. The Starship is currently designed to be captured by Mechazilla, so for it to land on a drone ship, it will need to be equipped with landing legs. Given the Starship's immense size, these legs must be robust enough to support its weight and prevent it from tipping over, especially when landing in the unpredictable conditions of the ocean. This doesn't mean Starship will remove the launch tower catch support system. Instead, Starship will utilize both methods simultaneously, providing multiple options to ensure a safe landing. Therefore, these legs also need to be foldable like the Flacon 9 both to reduce the risk of damage itself during re-entry and not to hinder the launch tower if the decision is made to land with Mechazilla. While Starship only requires a few adjustments, the drone ships it will land on will need to be completely redesigned. The current drone ships are simply too small. 
they were built to accommodate Falcon 9, not the immense weight of Starship. As a result, these new drone ships will need to be significantly larger than the ones in use today to bring the autonomous spaceport drone ship to its oceanic position. A tugboat is used along with a support ship that stands some distance away from the unmanned ASDS. The new drone ship, especially when the Starship is on it, would be extremely heavy. While the Starship is still in development and its weight and functionality are continually evolving, it's difficult to predict its final mass. However, one thing I do know is that the booster will still be super heavy, pun intended. So a much bigger or more powerful tug must be used to support this weight. Not only does it increase in weight, but the heat that the ASDS has to endure from the Raptor engine is much higher than the heat of the Falcon 9's Merlin engine. For context, Merlin engine thrust is currently around 86 tons while the Raptor 2 produces 230 tons at sea level. This is expected to rise to 280 to 300 tons with version 3 and 330 tons in the future. This will be a challenge not only for the deck material, but also for the cooling system. Through the video of the 100th landing on the Just Read the Instructions ship that SpaceX posted last month, we know that SpaceX is currently using a system to spray water on the surface of its drone ship to dissipate heat during landing. To withstand the heat from the Super Heavy booster, they might have to use something like the water deluge system they use on launch pads. For a few gimbal engines, that might be a bit overkill, but, you know, something in between. Another thing to consider is the height of the Starship. The Super Heavy alone is taller than the Falcon 9 with its fairing. The extra landing legs are still uncertain. We need something to ensure the Starship or Super Heavy won't fall over when it moves on the drone ship. There's something like that for Falcon 9. A tiny artificial creature is living inside the drone ship. The Falcon 9 securing robot, commonly known as Octagrabber, refers to a series of robots used on SpaceX's drone ships to autonomously secure Falcon 9 boosters after they land at sea. Once a booster lands, Octagrabber is remotely driven out of its blast-resistant garage on the drone ship and positioned beneath the booster. The little guy uses four arms that extend upward to latch onto the base of the Falcon 9, known as the OctaWeb, which is the source of its name. After a flight, the Falcon 9 booster has a very low center of gravity since the majority of its propellant tanks have been depleted during the mission. As a result, the engine section, the octaweb at the base, holds most of the remaining weight. The octagrabber robot attaches to this section, securing the Falcon 9 for transport. However, recovery teams still need to board the drone ship to carry out additional post-landing tasks. The robot helps ensure a safer and more efficient recovery process. For Starship, I can imagine a much larger robot, perhaps called Raptor Grapper specifically designed to handle this task. Yeah, I'm not really good at naming things, so I will rely on you guys to give it the best name in the comments section. Like the existing drone ships, to serve Starship's future landing missions, there will be at least three new versions of drone ships positioned in different locations. For operations in Florida, drone ships could be strategically positioned in the Atlantic Ocean to recover both Starships and Super Heavy boosters. Likewise, for Starbase, SpaceX has pinpointed four potential drone ship zones. The Indian Ocean, the Central Pacific near Hawaii, the Northeast Pacific, and the Southeast Pacific. Furthermore, the Gulf of Mexico could serve as an additional recovery area for Super Heavy landings, offering greater flexibility in mission planning. If SpaceX successfully develops a drone ship sea landing system for Starship, it will take a big step toward the vehicle's goals. Returning landing legs is necessary for exploration of the Moon, Mars, and other celestial bodies in the solar system. The concept images of Starship HLS clearly show the presence of landing legs, including both foldable and fixed models, which makes perfect sense. Given the Moon's rugged surface and the challenging conditions of space, a robust, precise, 
and automated landing system is essential for a successful touchdown. The data and insights gained from landing on legs in challenging environments like the ocean will provide invaluable experience for testing lunar landings. By minimizing the number of tests needed, SpaceX can save both time and resources, accelerating progress toward its goals. Landing on Mars presents even greater challenges than landing on the Moon or Earth, primarily due to its extremely thin atmosphere. Safely touching down on the Red Planet will require overcoming obstacles unique to Mars. On top of that, the journey itself is long and can only be undertaken every six months. As a result, for us to build enough confidence to send humans to Mars, we must conduct years of testing and refine our landing techniques. Then why not take this opportunity to perfect various landing methods right here on Earth? And ultimately, the sea landing method will be key to making Starship a viable vehicle for point-to-point -point transport missions right here on Earth. Starship boasts speeds far surpassing those of conventional commercial aircraft, with Elon Musk expressing confidence that this revolutionary vehicle can reach any destination on Earth in under an hour. Having a capacity of over 100 tons and up to over 200 tons of V3, Starship will be a revolutionary Earth range transport. However, to ensure a smooth landing in densely populated cities like Shanghai without disrupting the local population or infrastructure, Starship must land in the nearby ocean. SpaceX's 2017 Starship Earth to Earth video, released seven years ago, made this point very clear. The only difference is that this time, instead of landing at a fixed landing point in the middle of the ocean and then taking a boat back to the city, an autonomous spaceport drone ship gives us more initiative and options during the landing process. Drone ships can also bring Starship to land for refurbishment in preparation for the next flight. To offer a truly global service, SpaceX would need to establish a network of spaceports and logistical hubs, which takes time, capital, and international cooperation. They would also need to adhere to both national and international aviation and space regulations including those set by the FAA, Federal Aviation Administration, the ICAO, International Civil Aviation Organization, and other relevant national authorities in the regions they operate. However, as Starship proves its strength in the global market, the regulatory groundwork laid by organizations like the FAA and the growing global cooperation in space exploration could pave the way for suborbital transport to become more viable. The moment Makazilla caught the Super Heavy booster on its return was an incredible achievement, but the one that truly captured my heart was when both Falcon 9 boosters landed simultaneously. It was in that instant that I fully grasped how far we've come with technology, reigniting the childhood dream of exploring the universe that once felt so distant. Rockets were always meant to have legs, to set foot on alien worlds. SpaceX may experiment with different methods, gaining invaluable experience to refine their technology, but in the end, the tried and true approaches that have proven effective will remain the most reliable solution. The synergy between drone ship landings and Mechazilla's capture will be crucial in unlocking Starship's full potential, enabling it to serve as a versatile vehicle for both Earth and interplanetary missions.